Hey traders, this is Ron Haidt. Hope you guys had a fantastic day. As always, nothing in this presentation shall constitute a recommendation to buy or selling security. Trading stocks and options involves risk and a specific financial issue you should always be addressed by your financial advisor. We'll kick off here with the SPY, the Spiders ETF. Uh, markets were up nice today. SPY added 1.29%, got above the previous highs close on 2.5, which was 273.10, so we beat it by a buck. Target is 280, about 60 S&P points or $6 on the SPY. The Dow, a little better, jumping 1.43%, also closed above the previous little swing high. Its target right up there around 260, about 500, 600 points higher on DIA. The Qs tacked on 1.48% right on its 200-day moving average. It didn't take out the previous high from February 5th, but it's pretty much pretty close to doing so. The IWM gap in run today up another um, 1.25% target 200 day. And then if we look at the MDY, it was up just over 1% target 200 day. If we take a look at the banking ETF XLF, it is not over its 200 day moving average yet. But this is the left shoulder. Here's the head. This could be a little hitch in the right shoulder. Just keep an eye once we get above the 200 day. And then also when we take out the 27 and a quarter area. So the 200 day SMA is in purple. That's at 20. Hmm. What is that? 2665. Sorry, 2665 it is right there. And then also up here around 27 and a quarter. We get above those two areas. It's just bullish. This is looking like an inverted head and shoulders here. If we take a look at SMH, the semiconductors, after getting above the 200 day, let me zoom in here. We pull back, held it, held it, and then we just popped right back up today. So it's target up there around 107.50, ballpark. We could also say maybe 106, but this is all overhead supply. So I usually just go right back up to the previous high. Then if you look at Transport's IYT, they got right near their 200-day moving average in purple. If they can get above it, there's this little area at 195 that might be resistance, then it's back up to the highs. Across the board, bullish is looking a bullish. Bulls are in control. Now, I had a question on bonds and the overall market. If we take a look at bonds via TLT. They are holding up right now towards the upper end of their range, but if I bring back in a five-year daily, excuse me, a five-year weekly chart, you can see we've gone nowhere. Since the middle of 2017, it's flat, no breakout. Above 125, which is that little area there I have highlighted, above 125, then we start going up here. Otherwise, at 121, there's resistance, and then down here is support. We get below 110, then we go down to maybe 105. Now gold, Via GLD, which I do have a bullish position, and I have long calls on GLD. If I look at a one-year chart, we talked about how once the end of December, January arrives, and there is the zoom right in seasonally, six years in a row, spot on. This, from around 125 up to about 128, 129, this is overhead supply. All that means is, like I said in a previous video, if I go back two years, the people that bought up here, it's taken them over a year to make get made whole. So that's why you, often when you see a stock get back up into a big choppy area, it has some trouble cutting right through it. It has to absorb some of that overhead supply before it can go higher. So this still is bullish. I would continue to think about using the red line, the 20 day EMA as an end of day trailing stop. Now, just because gold is bullish now does not mean it's going to be bullish the rest of the year. From a seasonality perspective, gold does well typically end of December, January, into February. But in long-term view of the market, if I take you back and look at, let's say, just bring in, I mean, I like to look at 10 years, I'll look at 20. If you take us back to 2009 on a monthly level, when G, for GLD, we got up as high as 180, as low as 100, and now we're just, we're just basing. The chart on a monthly level is not screaming bullish. Fundamentally, gold's not going up when there's lots of reasons for it potentially to go up. So I don't think it's time yet for gold to shine, only because it's not acting like it wants to. And the same can be said for silver. If we look at SLV, it's back down to where it was trading in 2009. It had a nice surge up into the 40s, and now we're back at 14. No breakout there. If I look at TLT going back 10 years, again, on a monthly level, it's going nowhere. I still think stocks, and if I look at SPY, stocks has been the name of the game for the past 10 years since the 0809 bottom. It's the most liquid market in the world, attracts, can attract the most capital, get in and get out. You can't do that in foreign countries. So gold's not running. Bonds are just doing what they're doing. I still think they're going to blow up. I think the stock market will be the last, the last thing 
standing till we're said and done before then it goes into its crash at some point. But where else are you going to put your money? You can't put it in a bank. You're not going to earn any return there. And if you're trading someone else's money, um, legally, of course, right? You know, think of it as if you're a hedge fund and you have to show a return in order to keep trading people's money. Where are you going to put it? You can't put it in the bank. I don't think you're going to go buy the euro or buy the pound or buy something like that. It ends up finding its way into the stock market. And we talk, that, we talk about that a lot at Market Gamer, but I don't always go into great detail here because we're trying to do a couple minute video. It's the only game in town with liquidity. Other worldwide stock markets can't absorb it. That's why the, the U.S. just continues to outperform and do well as a, as a big market. So, yeah, still very bullish on the markets. I got asked, you know, where do I think we can go? I have no idea. I have no system to say, hey, it looks like 10, 20% higher. My guess is before we get a blow off top, it's going to be a lot higher, but it's just my guess. Considering how far we've come so far, we still haven't seen anything like a blow off, not just yet. All right, moving on. And if you have more questions on that, feel free, make some posts or send me an email at cs at marketchamber.com. And you know, I can try to answer some of those questions in these videos. So here is Molson. I like Coors, um, the beverage. <laughs> and um, it had some resistance up here in November, December. We sort of got back up there in February a little bit. Now earnings, if you look, came out just today in the morning, it's, it's gapped down. Pretty considerable, almost 10%, six bucks. Target's gonna be back down at 55, still 10% lower on PAP. Here's something to keep an eye on. This is PDC. I came across it, it was a bigger mover. This is PDC Energy, never traded it. I don't even know if I've ever even looked at it. But a lot of energy stocks have taken it on the chin. But what happened today was this 8% move occurred on a spike in volume. Not huge, but it was a spike. And if we can close above this $35 area, which would take out the previous January highs, structurally, from a chart perspective, we might as well say the 200 days of target. That's a big move for an energy type stock. So just keep an eye on that one. And Skechers seasonally has positive earnings. It did gap up. I really can't zoom in on this chart. It did gap up. And now we're just going sideways. Once we close above this previous high, 33 and a quarter, not much, 26 more cents. We get about 33 and a quarter on a closing basis. The gap fill at around 42.50 would be the next technical target. So if I do zoom in, just watching 33 and a quarter, 33 and a quarter. Here we had 32.58. We tried to get up there, we haven't. So now we're just biding our time. This is not bearish. If you look at today's move and you see bearish engulfing on Skechers, yes, your eyeballs are correct. That is the definition, but we haven't broken out of a range and it was on lighter volume. If this volume would have been way up here, it would be a different story. I would say, whoa, heads up, big volume spike. This is what bearish engulfings start out as before we get the sell off. It's just a very, very weak bearish engulfing. And in candlestick terminology, we always want that confirmation day, in my opinion. We don't just want to take it as a one day wonder. So this is still bullish. Right now, it's just forming a bull flag. So we'll keep an eye on this one in the days ahead. That's it. Nice short video. Wish you guys all the best and I'll see you in the next video.